Here's a hook, yo. So I can smell plant-based meat from a mile away. Hi friends, welcome to the all new Rebranding Autism Show, where I talk about my life with autism so I can motivate you to enjoy your life and we can grow together. Special guest, yeah, yeah. special guest, yeah, yeah. who that, who that yeah, special yeah. guest? Tara, woo! Hey everybody. If you don't know who Tara is, she's technically my case manager, but we like best friends. Best friends. I've known her for 10 years now. Mm -hmm. It's been a pleasure so going nice, old with you. Nice to know you. So she's pretty cool. She's been in some of my other videos. And she's going to be our special guest today. Yay. So let's make her feel welcome. Thank you. Yay. Thanks for having me, Jen. <laughs> All right, friends. Let's get to the heart of it. It's time for... Weekly Recap. With Jimmy Sumba. Lindsay, who you know from last episode, dared me to go inside the rat rollers where I work, which are these giant plastic wheels. I missed that. Yeah, they're human sized wheels and you get inside and you basically roll. And the point is to tumble in them. It's pretty impossible not to get all tumbled up in them. <laughs> yeah, so naturally I've been avoiding this for months now because Lindsay's been like, you gotta get into rat rollers, Jen. You gotta get into rat rollers. And I have an aversion to being upside down. I, I hated tumbling even when I was a kid. Like, we had gymnastics in school, yeah. and I would, like, play sick and stuff because I hated doing the forward rolls and Is stuff. Is there hills? Was there a hill? No. There's no hills in Florida. There's no hills in Florida. So it's not really fun going in a tumble. It's on a track, though. It's oh. on a track, and they push okay. you. Anyways, roll the clip. But I don't see that happening. <laughs> Woo! I don't like it. I made Lindsay get in it too, so I guess she did practice what she preached or put mm -hmm. her mouth where her money is. Put money your where, money your mouth. where your mouth Put your money where your mouth is. That. I might even do it again because when we were done, we were like, we need to play more. Can I go? Yeah, totally. Okay. Next stop, <laughs> Montero and the Rat Rollers. No, I just want to watch. No, I, no you no, just no. said you were going to get no, in the... Yes. I do. Coming up. Stay tuned. Something really cool that I did this week mm -hmm. was film... My first scripted film on Saturday. Remember I was telling you I'm about so that? I'm so proud of you. <sighs> you guys, it was... Okay, I was so nervous. I mentioned that last week. But it was really amazing. Everyone was really excited to be there and happy. Of course, I kept them happy because I bought them snacks and snacks drinks. Snacks are key. You got to keep people happy. And, um, and we just had a really good time. And I was very surprised that I was able to direct my crew and my cast. Because I had three kids. Kids that I had to direct. They're hard to direct. Yes. Plus, like, their brothers and sisters were there. And I had a crew member. My friend Antonio from Tampa came down. And my friend from here, his name is Josh, helped me. He mm -hmm. was a personal assistant. He was a big help. Yeah. So I had all these people that I had to tell, like, oh, can you do this? Can you do this? And it was just nerve-wracking because I don't like being a bossy person. But it turns out I'm a pretty good bossy person. You actually like bossy. <laughs> You do. <laughs> You're very Because I kind of know how I want things, and then I'll just say, oh, okay. Is that it? what it is? Yeah. You just gave I'm, me your secret. I'm just specific about the things and the way I want them. That's true. So I just direct. It's all good. It's all good. You can be a good boss. It's called being a good leader. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So I found out I'm, I'm a pretty good leader this you're, week. You're a very good leader. And the kids were fun. They drive me kind of crazy because, like, I, I know, like, people say being a mother is hard, but I was basically a temporary mother. And, like, I told them they were bouncing the ball. That was one of the props. And I was like, guys, don't bounce the ball in here because there's lights and cameras and stuff. Fifteen seconds later, the ball Bounce bounces the ball. and hits the light. And I turn into like, and all the kids like freeze and then start giggling. And like, I'm like, who did that? And I just felt like a teacher slash mom. So now I have the experience, so I don't need to ever have it again. 
Well, you have it a lot, though, because there's kids love you. And they do they sometimes. Love you. Yeah, I'm like fun Auntie Jen. You are. Sometimes. But yeah, it was really fun directing the kids, and they were really good actors, and they listened, and they did their best. And so that um, movie I talked about last week will be coming out. If you want to stay up to date, I'll put a link to the Facebook page below, and also you can subscribe to my. Lone Dog Studios channel, which is where I place all my films, and you can watch it there when it comes out. I'll leave that link below, too. And what did I learn from all this this week? That sometimes your plans can change, but things can still go well. Because when I was editing my new video, the one I just filmed, it was not working out the way I planned. Like, the way I had written the script, it was not looking right. I hated it. So I thought and I thought on it, and actually we ended up skipping to the middle and rearranging all my clips and changing my story. And I learned that it's okay to sometimes change your plans and go against what you thought was gonna happen, mm -hmm. and sometimes something amazing can come out of it. Because something really cool happened when I changed the story around. I'm not gonna give away spoilers. You'll have to watch the film, but it was really exciting. And you've done much better with being flexible. Thank you, Tara. You're welcome. I'll point that out. Thank you, I appreciate that. Commenters of the week. This week, our comment comes from Kai Linton. Thank you, Kai Linton. You comment all the time. I see all the things you say, and you have some really cool stuff to say. And this week, Kai said, love this video format. We'll be looking forward to it every Thursday. You could do flashbacks to moments in old videos, like you could do funny moments one week, bloopers another week, epic moments another. I'm also looking forward to new videos on your new film channel. Wow. Thank you, Kai. That was so great to hear. Here, and now some yeah. great ideas. So I thought, why don't we do a flashback video today? Tara, did you know I was in my first fight in second grade? I did not know that. It was a full-on scrap. scrapper. Yeah. <laughs> it was a full-on scrap fight. Yeah. We finish each other. But I was actually sandwiches. the victim. I didn't start it. Oh. Yeah. I didn't start the fight. Did you finish it? No, I cried and ran away. I'm kind of mad at myself. I wish I had stuck up for myself better. But yeah, it was my neighbor, and she was the same age as me, so we were stuck doing everything together. But she was the polar opposite of me, and I couldn't stand her. All she wore was pink. The teachers thought she was perfect, but she wasn't. She did a lot of bad things, perfect. which I saw behind the scenes. And it was just a very frustrating situation. Anyways, we were fighting over a bucket at the creek. It was a whole thing. I'm going to link the video below, but I'm going to roll a little clip right now. Sounded legit. So I brought my little bucket and things were cool for a little while. We were all in the mud looking under rocks when this girl decides to take my bucket. Now it's not my fault that she didn't have the forethought to bring one for herself and I wasn't sharing. Besides she didn't ask. She just grabbed it saying it was hers. Hers. So I grabbed it back. I was like nah dog we both know that this is my bucket and then it happened. Her eyes just got kind of all serial killer like and quick as a snake. <laughs> So if you want to know more about my first fight, yeah. you can check out the video. And Tara, she even scarred my face. Where? It's gone now, but it was there for like a while. Do you know where she is now? No. Does it matter? No. My first fight. All right, guys, we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. Welcome back, guys. And now it's time for a very popular segment. Can't, Can't get, get enough, enough of the news, news and reviews. reviews. Yeah. So my mom sent me this video actually, and she was like, Jen, she reminds me a lot of you. And her name is Ashanti, and she was on the video by Special Books for Special Kids. And Chris is the man who runs that show, and he asked her if you had one wish, what would it be? And she said, to have friends. Aww. Yeah, and that touched my heart because she says that she's 23 years old, and that's about the age I was, and younger, like when I was high school age, that I wish I had had friends so badly. When I was little, little I had friends because it's different because you're in school and you're kind of automatically friends with the kids in your class. But then when you get older and kids start picking out friends and like having clicks, mm -hmm. I just got like totally left out. So I got really, really sad when I was in high school because I saw all the kids had friends and they just totally ignored me. I think just, there are more people who wish they had actual friends and not just acquaintances. Yeah, that too. It's hard to have a real friend. A real friend that you can trust and that you can make mm -hmm. jokes with and talk to. It's different than just knowing people. Yeah. You're right, it's different. I think a lot of people feel that way. 
too. But Ashanti really touched my heart. Mm -hmm. And then she also said, she said that she's worried people will think she's not smart because of the way she pre presents herself. And I was like, oh my goodness. Because people are constantly underestimating me sometimes because they might think one thing when they first meet me and they underestimate me. And that is a frustration that I have to this day. And the advice I would give Ashanti is instead of like trying to constantly worry about if people realize how smart you are or your capabilities, just go out there and do what you do and and, and show it. Like yeah. I used to worry about trying to convince people on the spot like, oh, I'm smart. I can do this. I can. But now I just do like cool things that I'm capable of. And then they realize it because they see what I've what I'm capable of. Kind of like show it, don't have to tell it. Yeah. Like that's my best advice that I would give to her on that subject. I think that's good advice. Yeah. And I'm gonna link um, the video in the description. But first, what did I put myself through this week? I do it for the people. Roll the tape. Kayla and I are gonna try the Impossible Burger Burger King. If they have it, because my friend said the other day they didn't have it. So let's see. Uh, yes, do you have the Impossible Burger? Yeah. Can I get one of those, please? They actually had it, guys. Like, I also ordered a backup Whopper because I don't know about this. Kayla, you're gonna try it too. I'm gonna try it, but I'm a little nervous. Kayla's a big meat eater. Wait, I gotta get, I gotta pay. Okay, hold on. Oh yeah, here it is. What? Now, in the commercial, it states that it tastes exactly like a real burger. Challenge accepted. If you don't know a lot about me, I used to live at the Judge Olmberg Center where we had a vegan diet. So I can smell plant-based meat from a mile away. Oh my goodness, does that look like meat? That looks like a bean burger. Yeah. It looks exactly like a bean burger. Can you smell it too? It's, it smells like vegetarian meat. I grew up on vegetarian meat too. Oh Lord. I don't know why you're laughing, Kayla, because you're taking a bite next. <laughs> Let me get lots of onion. Not gonna lie, it's not bad. Does it taste like a burger? Okay, when you first bite it, you might be tricked. And then the aftertaste, it's a bean burger, people. <laughs> <laughs> Kayla, it's your turn. Pass the camera. Big bites. I can, I can smell the difference. Big bites. Where's the pickle? I want the pickle. <laughs> Alright, here it goes. Big bites! Woohoo! Like, it does at first taste like a burger. But there is that. The Beanie taste. aftertaste. Yeah. Like, I would eat that if I had to. Like, if I was yeah. back in my old program where we ate vegan food and they gave me that, I would tear it up. But if I had the option to get meat, like, I wouldn't, like, really change over as a person that eats meat regularly. Um, but I think if you are a vegetarian, it is a great option. It mm -hmm. really has pretty yeah. good taste. And um, you probably wouldn't, um, yeah, you'd probably enjoy it. So as far as for a vegetarian burger, dude, I'd give it a 9 out of 10. Pretty good review, Burger King. You didn't fool me. You wouldn't be able to fool me. If you handed me that and told me it was a regular Whopper, I'd call Bo, for lack of a better word. And now I'm about to eat my real Whopper because I'm hungry. But I do have one thought. If you're truly a vegetarian and don't want to eat meat, I don't think you can eat this burger because they probably cook it on the same grill where they cook the regular burgers. Therefore, it's tainted with yep. meatness. Kind of hungry now. Sorry. I would actually recommend the Impossible Burger. Tara. Yes. So how'd you like being a special guest on the show? I loved it. You were kind of nervous in the I beginning. was nervous, but you gave me treats. Yep. It made me feel comfortable. And I really appreciated that because, you know, I get nervous. And it's all because you changed your attitude. And that leads me That's to a true. quote from Maya Angelou. If you don't like something, change it. If you can't change it, change your attitude. Awesome. I love that. And I think that's the way I've been living lately, and it has definitely changed my life. So I wanted to leave you with those words and invite you to come back. Next week, we'll have the week off, but we'll be uploading a vlog from Vid Summit. So stay tuned for that. It's going to be a three-day extravaganza in California. So fun. I'm going to California. 
like that's sinking in yeah. to me right now. In a couple days. Yeah, like on the plane for five hours to California. So of course I'm taking you guys along with me so you can look forward to that next week. And episode three of the Rebranding Autism Show will be back the week after next, but there will be content next week. So look forward to that. Thanks for watching the Rebranding Autism Show. Okay, bye.